Hello, it's part five of the robot arm, which is a compliant arm, which means it's force driven. Each of the hubs has some springs in, which means that the motor drives the hub, but the internal is sprung separately. And we can measure the force on the arm by measuring the stretch in that spring or the difference between the inner and outer hub. So I've made quite a few axes, and the result of this is that we can actually push this backwards and we can train it by working out what the force is and actively back driving the motors. So we can position it by pushing it around essentially and saving those positions. And we can also detect how much force we're pushing if we run into something, or we can decide to push a certain amount of force. And last time I finished this linear axis, which goes up and down, and the arm is a Scara arm, which means each of these has a vertical axis, and then we have this one linear axis to get that up and down movement. So this time we're gonna be making the gripper that fits on that axis, and that should conclude most of the build. Now I did build a force control gripper before, which you can check back in my channel. Um, it wasn't quite the right design, it wasn't structured quite right, but the principle of it worked. So today we're gonna to make a new version. But before that, just a quick app for my Patreon. Don't forget you can support me on patreon.com slash xrobots. Or if you don't like Patreon, then have a look at YouTube channel membership. Just click on that join button below. I also have a merchandise store, which is Teespring, and you can find the link in the description to this video. And you can get open dog t-shirts and various other designs. And and various other merchandise so check those out so here's the previous gripper that i built which was a three finger gripper and we did something very similar to the rest of the arm where we measure the force so we've got these springs and servos that pull the spring and that pulls the finger there's three servos and three springs and then we're actually measuring the bend of the finger with a bend sensor which isn't a very good way to do it because it's not linear and then we can compare the two the servo position and what we're actually getting out of the finger and that tells us how much force is being applied the key problems are that in fact i've got one piece of bungee cord that's pulling the finger back and then we've got the spring pulling it the other way and that means as we close the finger as you'd expect the force gets greater and greater so that doesn't give us a very linear result what we really need is to have a pair of springs that pull it either way there's some issues with these joints as well needing more force as they get closed uh, which gives us very weird results although the actual thing was compliant we could drive it backwards and the servos would actively back drive so hopefully you're going to make a more compact and slightly better version of that to put on the arm so i've started the design for the new gripper i've decided only to put two fingers on it this time so let's take the top off and we can see we've got this parallel mechanism that keeps the fingers parallel so as we move these we should find these two fingers always stay parallel and come into grip quite nicely. And of course we can put any sensors on there or foam padding or whatever we want on there really. So they probably won't be as spindly as that in the end. Now I haven't decided whether we're going to have two servos each turning these two big rotary pieces or whether we're going to have a gear in there that keeps the two in sync and one servo and one set of springs and one set of full sensing. It might be quite good to have the fingers independent, but we'll do a bit more of the design and see how it turns out. So moving on a bit, I've pretty much fleshed out all of the design here. So there we go. Let's just move those grippers around. So they'll only come to about there, maybe a bit closer, but we'll put some padding on there so they can grab stuff. Got a bit of a plan for that. And they come all the way out there. So that should work pretty well. So we're going to have one servo for each of those um, pulleys there, which fit in the holes at the back. And we've got this kind of access thing so we can see the springs and the strings and put those together well. So I'm going to use magnetic encoders to measure the actual joint positions, which are going to fit on top there. And the rest of this is just going to have 3mm shaft, the same as the other gripper that I did to make those pivot points. So we get all those parts printed and then we can assemble it. So here are all the parts I've made. We've got the top and bottom plates. We've got the finger parts there with their spacers that we'll put together in a minute. And we've got the top plate here and we've got the main rotation parts. So this is our top plate and of course the servos fit in here and we've got our main rotation hubs. So these ones fit under here and these fit back through these holes and they seem to be a pretty good fit actually. So that seems to work pretty well. The rest of this will be three mil shaft holding it together. And we're going to put a magnet on there with a magnetic encoder like the ones that I've used in the rest of the arm. And that allows us to measure the difference between the actual position and the servo position. And each servo is going to have a spring that pulls either side of this pulley 
So that should mean we can work out the spring stretch and therefore how much force is being applied. So I've just used some three mil steel rods sort of pressed into the base and the holes are pretty tight and I've loosened up the holes in these with the three mil drill. So now these are pretty uh, free to move. I have used some multi-purpose silicon grease to make sure these are nice and free. So they seem to work pretty well. So we can now put the fingers on and then eventually we'll come along and put the top on. And these seem to be a pretty good fit at rotating in here as well. They're nice and loose, but we will sort of grease those up as well. And so the whole assembly is looking pretty good. So that's assembled and my fingers work just like they do in the CAD. And of course they always stay parallel. They don't quite meet, but we'll, as I said, have some pads or something there to help grip objects. Got a bit of a plan for different things we can clip on there. And they come quite wide. So that should be good for most of the things I want to do. So the top of course fits on. We've got these blocks here to space it out and the pegs from the front fit into the plastic, and so do these where we'll put the encoders. I've just stolen the electronics out of the old gripper as well as the servos, and I've just reprogrammed the Arduino Uno, and we won't be using this, we'll be using the Teensy on the arm to control anything, but for now I've just made a test rig, so when I turn the knob it moves the two servos, and this is just doing an analog read on this pot, and then going and using the servo library to position those servos, and uh, mapping one the other way around so they turn in opposite directions. There's plenty of example code out there about how to control a servo, and this is just a test so I won't go into too many details just yet. So you can see the springs inside, and there's a pair of springs that come from each servo to push and to pull. So now we can activate the gripper and we can close it up, and we can open it, and it is a bit jittery, and that's purely because the springs are sort of moving a little bit at a time. You can kind of see them doing a little caterpillar thing, and there is some friction on these joints, unfortunately. I probably need stronger springs, so we do get that jitter when it's closing, but we can nonetheless keep applying force if I block this. You can see those middle springs stretching a lot, which means I'm applying more force to the joints, and I can do that closer in as well. And that means we can measure this position, measure this position, and work out how much force we're applying. So yes, I can pick things up perfectly well. Although I do have smooth fingers at the moment, so we can do something about that and give them a sort of nice NinjaFlex 3D printed grip on there. And to get rid of that jitter, what we'd have to have done is made a sort of locking piece like we did with these other arm axis, which actually lock to the middle as you move it either way. So there's two fingers that actually grip this, and that means that it's pretty solid until you apply force, and then it can move either way and it springs back to the middle. So that's something we could have built into the gripper, but for now I just thought it was easier to have springs on either side pulling in either direction. And the gripper of course fits on this axis which goes up and down that we did last time, so if I turn this it will drive up and down, and of course that sliding axis is also force driven, so it's got this force sensor that can sense when I push it up and down. So everything is force driven in this project. So I've 3D printed some NinjaFlex fingertips that have these flexible ridges on, so that should help me grip loads of stuff. And now they almost meet in the middle, at least close enough to pick up a sausage. So the servos, we know what position they're going to, but to measure the actual position of the gripper after the spring, we're using the AMS5048 encoders again, which are magnetic encoders. And they come in a bag with a little magnet, which you rotate round on top of the sensor, and then it gives you the absolute position. So I've got the mounts made up here. So we've got our magnets installed on these pieces that rotate as the fingers rotate, and we've got the sensor in this mount, which is gonna mount on there on each side, and there's a little recess that fits in there so I can get it perfectly in the middle, and a couple of screw holes, and I've left mountings on the hand here. So we just need to wire those in, screw them on, and we should be able to read those positions and drive these positions. So I fitted those and wired them in, and also wired in the servos. All of that's wired into my existing breakout board with connectors that go to the electronics. And we've also got this regulator that takes 12 volts from the battery and gives us five volts at 10 amps to power the servos. It's a bit overkill, but this was off the old gripper, which of course had three servos and not two. And I fitted this additional connector to my board so we can wire those into the Teensies, both the servos and the encoders. And we're gonna read the encoders by timing the PWM that comes out of them. Unfortunately, all the pins on the Teensy 3.6 have interrupts, so that makes that really easy. So I've got two interrupts attached to those Teensy pins nine and 12, which are looking for a change in that pin state. My interrupt service routine is down at the bottom. That's exactly the same as the ones we did for the other two encoders, where we're just basically starting and stopping a timer uh, when that pin changes and measuring the pulse width. I've then mapped those values uh, to have a range between 600 and 2400. And that's exactly the same as the range the servos will take, which are driving the fingers. 
So now if we go and put that out to a serial monitor, we should find we've got the two original values of PWM. Of course, they turn in opposite directions, and we've got the actual servo values, which I've turned round. Now, the servos turn in opposite directions as well, so we're probably going to have to turn one of those back round again to match, but having it with that scale is going to make it much easier to work out the difference in the position between the servo and the actual finger. So now if we squash those fingers together, we'll notice that we get roughly 2400 on both of those, and if we move them apart, we get some lower value. So that seems to be working pretty well. So now I am just reading a demand position over the serial terminal that I can type in, and we're basically using that as the demand position for both fingers, so that's called read four. We've still got the scaling for the PWM values to match that value, so we're gonna use a value of between 600 and 2400, and I've just turned one of those upside down because well, the servos move in opposite directions, so that means they're both the same scale. And we're just controlling the servo positions for those now in microseconds. To work out the force for each finger, we've taken that demand and taken away the actual position of the finger reading from that encoder. So those values are all the same scale and that should tell us how much force there is. And we're now writing that out to the serial terminal so now we should be able to see the demand position, the two actual positions of the fingers, and the differences, which is how much the springs are stretching. So if I now put something in the middle of this gripper, and we go and give it a value, a fairly high one, to shut the gripper, we should see those middle springs stretching, so we can see our demand is 2,000, but our actual position is only 1,500 or so, and obviously the fingers are independent, so if I wiggle my hand, they change, and the force being measured on each one changes as well there. If I give it an even higher value, then we can see, of course, that now we're trying to demand 2400, but we've only got about 1600 or whatever there in the middle. And then our demands and our force changes as we change the force on each one. And back to hardly any force at all, depending on if we wiggle those finger positions based on basically those values being very similar now the jaws are open. So that allows us to measure the force, just measuring the difference between that servo and the actual position, so that measures the spring stretch and how much force we're applying. But what we really want to do is be able to drive an amount of force. So we can say how much force do we need to apply to this item, and we can have the gripper shut until it's stretched the spring by that amount. But before we see what that's like, it's time for an advert from the sponsor for this video, which is NordVPN. But what is a VPN? Well, a VPN is a virtual private network. There's a Nord app you can put on a mobile device or on a laptop or a desktop that makes a secure tunnel that's encrypted that goes over the internet into the NordVPN organization and they then allow you to pop out at various internet endpoints that you can choose around the world so when you're browsing the web or using an application it looks like you're in another location to that service so you literally get an IP address for Canada or somewhere in the US or Spain and if you go to whatismyip.org, it'll actually tell you you're in that location. And that means it looks like you're in that location to the service that you're using. This could be useful for various reasons you can probably think of. One thing I find really useful is to watch content that's geo-blocked, sometimes on YouTube in England that we can't watch, and also various other streaming services that license content by country or region. That means I can still watch that content because that service thinks I'm in another location. If you go to nordvpn.com slash James Bruton, you can get 75% off a three year deal. That works out at just $2.99 a month. If you use the promo code James Bruton, you'll also get another month for free. NordVPN have thousands of servers in 61 countries. There's Android and iOS apps to secure your mobile browsing experience, as well as being compatible with Windows and Mac OS. NordVPN have super fast servers and 24 seven customer support. It even works in China and bypasses the great China firewall. So don't forget, if you go to nordvpn.com slash James Bruton, you can get 75% off a three year deal. And if you use the code James Bruton, you get another month for free. All right, let's see what that gripper looks like. So now I've just turned that equation round so we drive force instead of measuring force. And basically we've got another variable here called difference in force. And that is the difference in our variable we're reading, which is now a demand force, and the actual force that's being applied. And that difference we're now using to drive to the servo. And of course, one is inverted because one servo turns the other way. So uh, at the moment, we've got a zero force here. And the result of that is that pretty much the gripper will stay wherever I put it. So if I close it, it stays closed. If I open it, it stays open. And if I'm lucky, I can get it to stay about halfway. It does tend to go one way or the other, and that's because it's very hard to balance zero force with the two springs, uh, but pretty much it's extremely compliant. It will go wherever I put it. So now let's try and grip something. So let's put a 500 force. 
There we go. So you should see those springs are quite stretched and that's grabbing the item really well. It's not as tight as it will go though. So if we uh, do a thousand, we should see those springs getting tighter. And of course, something like 300 makes them looser. 200, a little bit less. 100, a little bit less again. And if we go down to something like 40, we should find you can see the item slipping because it's not gripping it as much, but there's still positive force, so the jaws tend to shut. Now, if I want to open them completely, I can go for a negative number, which causes them to open, and of course they now want to force in the other direction. So um, that seems to be working pretty well. So it seems like the most useful purpose for having that compliant gripper is being able to decide how much force we apply to something. So we could pick up an egg or we could pick up a rock and we could apply enough force to pick up the mass without squashing it and breaking it. The rest of the joints are of course the same. We could use those to apply an amount of force by measuring the stretch on that spring, but it's probably more useful to just have them in compliancy mode so we can force the arm around, it will actively back drive, and we can save those positions and play them back later. But I guess what you really want to see is all of the arm in action doing something useful, being trained, picking up an item, putting it down. So I'm going to come back for one more video, which is really a showcase for the whole build, where we're going to see it hopefully making breakfast. Without breaking the plate. All right, don't forget to subscribe for the next episode and the last episode of this project and lots of other projects. All right, that's all for now.